Hi friends and fellow nursing school hopefuls. I am back with another video about how I studied ANP1 and ANP2. And let me just tell y'all, I just made this video and when I went back to edit it, I realized we, okay, we had snow in Georgia. Okay, y'all, super exciting. But because of that, the heat's been on, it's super dry. I had the worst static electricity and it was sticky and I felt like it was kind of noticeable. I'm blind as a bat, so I, not wearing glasses in these videos and I felt like it was super noticeable. So hopefully it's still not there. I just, I didn't want it to be distracting. Which I'm sad because I had a lot of good material, but hopefully we can go ahead, we can do it again, make it a little quicker, a little more efficient in this video. And y'all wish me luck because I'm going to be hearing back from programs soon, soon, within the next month and then another round in April. So y'all wish me luck. And I want to say congratulations to all y'all. Um, thank you so much for the comments and the feedback on my Kaplan and my T's and Hesse video. Congratulations to all of you who did the test and did well. And I am so glad that those were helpful to you. Um, again, you know, I love interacting with y'all. So leave comments, feedback, all of that. It's great. So um, thank you so much for that. So how are you studying for AMP 1 and 2? So I took both... A&P 1 and 2, I actually took it at a community college, and I loved that, and my professor was great. The teachers at the college are great. Um, they have a nursing program there that I'm applying to. It's very well respected, um, and they, they, there were doctors, MDs. There's an MD that teaches there, and a licensed chiropractor, and I mean, they're really good professors there, and the class sizes are small, which I loved, so you really got good one-on-one -on -one time with your teachers and you got to know the people in your class and you were with the same people. It was great. And, oh, honey, sorry, my daughter just came in. Hey, baby, I'll be right out, okay? Okay. She's probably like, what are you doing, Mom? Like, what are you doing? Anyway. <laughs> okay. So, first, real quick, let's talk about, um, she okay? Oh, her sister was here and she left for a minute. So first of all, let's talk about how the course was set up. So, um, it was two semesters and we did A&P 1 the first semester, A&P 2 the second semester. So the, the, um, first semester, so our school actually gave us lecture notes, which was amazing. So, um, these lecture notes... So we had one for a and one, one for a and two. So anything that was in here was fair game on the test. And essentially what these lecture notes did is it took the information from this book, but it kind of broke it down into the important topics that our program wanted us to know. Um, and so we still did use the textbook though, and this was a very valuable resource as well. Um, and the way that it was set up, the way our classes were set up was A and P1, these lecture notes were broken down by sections. And then there would be tests over maybe four to five of those sections. Um, so A and P1, we went over terminology, chemical level of organization, cellular level of organization, tissues, integumentary system, which is, you know, the skin, um, and tissue. So we did like nervous tissue, connective tissue, um, we did, you know, adipose tissue, um, epithelial tissue, um, we talked about, and this was with cells too, we talked about different cells, we talked about like osteocytes, um, and you know, bone is a type of connective tissue, just a little, there you go, <laughs> a little preview there, anyway, and then we did the skeletal system, um, and we also focused on the anatomy of that, so we had to learn all the bones, um, we had to learn different structures on the bones, um, and we went through muscle physiology, we went through muscle anatomy, so naming the muscles and knowing their locations, um, nervous system where we did brain, cranial nerve, spinal cord, reflexes, reflexes, and we did neural integration, special senses, and then the autonomic nervous system. So then in A&P2, we did the digestive system, metabolism, and in metabolism, you talk about like aerobic respiration, anaerobic respiration. 
you go into the Krebs cycle, the products of each of um, the different steps of aerobic respiration. Um, and we did um, the blood, we did the cardiovascular system and the heart, obviously. We talked about the blood vessels and we actually had to learn each of the blood, each of the arteries and veins, their locations, um, what artery they fed into. And I drew a whole picture for that and um, I would label them and that really helped me learn there. Um, we did a lot of that in lab. I wish I would have kept my lab books. Um, we did the lymphatic system, immunity, the respiratory system, the urinary system, fluids and electrolytes, the endocrine system, and the reproductive system. <sighs> That's a lot. So, um, I would say, a lot of people say a &P one is more anatomy, a &P two is more physiology. That is true to an extent, although you do do a lot of anatomy in a &P two, especially with the digestive system. The heart and the blood vessels, um, those are big. You're going to learn a lot of the anatomy because you need to know where all the blood vessels are. Um, and then in AMP1, you need to know where all the muscles are and where all the bones are. You need to know their names, um, functions, etc. So our school had um, really cool, really cool video resources. So they had videos that corresponded not necessarily to each lecture, but to each section in our lecture notes. And it was not verbatim answering the questions in this book. It was just, um, it was just a lecture, but it was given by like one of the ladies who wrote these books. So sometimes they were anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour and a half. So what I would do is I would watch that and I would take copious notes on it. Now, when I'm talking about copious notes, y'all, I am talking. Is my hair staticky again? All right, we're gonna try to we're gonna try to make it with the staticky hair and all. All right, when I talk about copious notes, like these are all my notebooks from A and P one and two. So when I say copious notes, I mean like like this, like really detailed notes. So I would I would watch those lecture videos and take copious notes on them. Now, um, if you do not have that as a resource, then you may have PowerPoints. So if your school gives you PowerPoints, I would suggest you the same thing. Read through the PowerPoints, rewrite, the th rewrite what they say, but in your own words. Sometimes even just writing verbatim helps because it's the act of writing. I am a visual kinetic learner. The act of writing something I am reading, that just helps me retain it. Typing it on a computer, that's not gonna do it for me, but physically writing it, that really helps. On top of that, I would also draw pictures, and I found this to be so helpful. So for example, here I have, um, I have pictures of some of the tissues, so columnar, cuboidal, squamous, um, I am also drawing pictures of mitosis. So let's see, I would also, I mean, I drew so many pictures. This is integumentary system. Um, and then the bones. And I would label like the different tubercles or the condyles on the bones. Um, I didn't do it for every bone. Well, I did it for, I did it for a lot of bones especially the major bones that had a lot of landmarks on them. Um, and, you know, even just the location of the bones, like the bones of the skull, um, that, that way to give you some context. So I would also draw, draw pictures, draw pictures of neurons. Um, okay. So I think I think you think you get the gist of it, but also like the neural integration pathways, I would draw those, um, and I would draw all the places that they stopped. Same with reflex arcs. It, sorry, <laughs> I got people walking in and out of here, y'all. Um, and stop, get out of here. I'm gonna have to figure out how to edit that out. Um, the reflex arcs and then the different tracks. So how motor impulses would, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so distracted from that. So we would talk about motor impulses, how, you know, they began the precentral gyrus and they would come down your spinal cord and the ways in which they would go out and how sensory input would come back in. 
So drawing pictures of that and really step-by-step -step understanding the process and all the different places that they stopped. Like, you know, for example, I mean, I, I have it written down really, really detailed, but I would list literally all the stops they would make. If that makes sense, it's very detailed. I, I don't want to explain it all here because it'll take forever, but, um, but essentially what I'm doing is I'm writing down processes. So I'm taking notes on the videos, I'm drawing pictures, and I am writing processes when we're learning about the physiology of something, or I'm drawing pictures when we're learning about the nap. Okay, so now, you can also do this with your book. If that's the only resource you have, that's totally fine, because our book is an amazing resource, and it was set up where there is a lot of headings in bold, so, as you can see in our book, um, look, see, I would, so what you can do when you only have the book as a resource, if you do not have PowerPoints or videos, you can read through and what you do is just focus on the bold, focus on the information that's around there and you don't necessarily have to read the whole thing, skim through that before the lecture. So, so I would get up, I would study for two hours um, every morning and I would get up at like 4.30, I have two little kids, so that's when I, I had to do it. I wanted the evenings to myself. I was actually, no, I was pregnant when I was in, when I was taking AMP one and two. So I wanted my evenings to myself, wanted to spend it with my family. I'd get up at 4.30, study for two hours, and then I would study for an hour in the afternoon. So I would aim for three hours a day. Sometimes that might switch it up, do a little less in the morning, a little more in the afternoon, maybe study with a friend or something like that. Now, if you're a night person, go ahead and do eight to 10. If that's, if that's what's good for you to study eight to 10, go ahead and you know do it that way. That works as well. Um, so then lecture. So then when I went to lecture, I would make sure to take copious notes on everything he said. I would write down everything, I would draw pictures, my notes were usually a little more sloppy in lecture because I was writing quickly, but it was the act of writing it down that helped me. So that was the second time. I would write things down three times. So I'd write it down at first, um, studying my pre-lecture and then during lecture and then after lecture, I would go back and I would answer all the cues the cues, the questions in this lecture notebook. Um, and as you can see, this is a pretty, pretty detailed notebook. I mean, there's a lot of stuff highlighted. There's a lot of stuff you need to know, but I would go through and I would fill out my lecture notes. So that is the third time I would write it down. All right, so, I'll, I don't know if I told you, I did. I got A's in both of these. I got an A in a and P1, A and P2, and both labs. Um, all right, so now, if you do not have these lecture notes as a resource, you still wanna go ahead, um, do a little pre-reading, but maybe wait till you get to lecture, write down everything that they're telling you in lecture, and then go back, and based off what you heard in lecture, go back and read the sections in your book that correspond to what you heard in lecture, and then take more of your notes from that instead of doing all the pre-prep, because you may not know what's important yet, that way you're focusing on what's important, because time is of the essence. You do not want to waste your time on things that are not, you are not going to be tested on. And that's another thing, people say Khan Academy is a good resource, and it is, but at the same time, make sure that you're gonna be tested on that stuff. Don't be diving, taking deep dives on things that is, too, is maybe too detailed, but not super important. So you wanna make sure you stick to what's important. Check your syllabus, see what you're studying, go based off the lecture, and then the resources the teacher gives you, those are the resources you should be focusing on. Um, just a side note, because I know a lot of people that spend a lot of time on extraneous stuff and kind of miss the big topic and you, you know, you're, you know, you don't, you don't want to do that. Uh, but, um, okay. So for example, let's say that you only have the book to go off of. 
All right, so what you might want to do then, since you don't have questions to go off of, is you might want to write some questions where you're documenting processes. So for example, what are the characteristics of enzymes? How do they work? You might want to make flashcards for the bones, the muscles, the blood vessels. I didn't really do that. I actually just drew pictures. So I would draw pictures of the skeleton, draw pictures of like the leg, the quadriceps, the different muscles there, draw the blood vessels throughout the body. Um, and then document them and then their location in that context. Um, so hopefully you'll have some targeted material. That, like when studying for a test, what I would do is I would, we did have um, exam reviews in these books. Now the test, the questions were nothing like the test questions, but it was very detailed questions. It was just good to go back and review. But what I would do is I would go through your notes and I would go through the lectures and I would look at the reoccurring themes there. Hopefully your teacher again will give you targeted material, but if they do not, for some reason, if they do not, Go ahead, look through that, look for the major themes, and then anything you're comfortable with, check it off. Anything you're not comfortable with, go back into the book, read about it, and then try to rewrite it in your own words so that you, like, for example, list the steps of cellular metabolism, or not cellular metabolism, but aerobic respiration. Well, basically, yeah, two different names here. Um, aerobic respiration and list the products. So you write that, you're not comfortable with it, you keep writing that and then check that off your list. Now if they give you targeted material, it is much easier. You can just go through, check off what you're comfortable with, anything you're not comfortable with. You go back, you take a deep dive into your book or into your videos or into your previous notes and you figure out what you're not comfortable with and maybe try to rewrite it again in your own words. So, um, that, now, again, just remember that, um, reading the whole thing, reading this whole book is not going to be practical. So if this is your only resource, I would take, set a timer for one to two hours. Um, I would wait till after the lecture, then I would go through and based off what you I would skim it before lecture, looking at the bold words, that way you know what the teacher is talking about. But then after lecture, I, that's when I would do the deep dive based off what the teacher lectured on, so you know what is important. So, all right, key takeaways. So, what's really important, I'm a visual kinetic learner, so know your learning style as well. Talk to the teacher and make sure you know you're answering questions in class, you're involved in class, you're participating. Teachers love that. And you'll really find the experience to just be that much better. Um, try to make some friends or your lab partner. You guys can study together. It's really helpful to be able to sort of teach things to someone else. Um, as for me, my key, my goal was to write things three times, write or draw. So. First, notes off the lecture videos, drawing pictures. Second, going to the lecture, taking notes there. And then third would be answering and filling out the lecture notes, which might include drawing pictures again, but it would include rewriting the material, answering questions. And then fourth, test study. Basically, I would do the review in the book, but I would also just go over the lecture notes, check off things I was comfortable with, and then things I was not comfortable with, I would answer a question about, or I would rewrite it in my own words. If you do not have lecture notes, you do not have PowerPoints, you do the same thing, but it's based off your teacher's lecture and what they tell you is important, which you can get from the syllabus, or, um, and you can use questions from the book also as good practice questions, or you can make up your own questions based off some of the things that the teacher is lecturing on. For example, how does blood flow through the heart? Um, but also these books do have questions in them at the end of each chapter. So if you are not lucky enough to be provided with lecture notes, 
um, I would definitely use these as a resource also. Um, and I would talk to your teacher too about what is a good resource, especially if you're not giving targeted material. Because I'm sure, you know, a lot of programs will give you good resources, but you know, just in case, I wanna try to help everybody here. Because um, I know in nursing school they do, they don't do lecture notes, at least not at the nursing schools that um, I've applied to. I haven't heard that they do anyway. Um, I did ask one girl and she's like, no, no lecture notes. So I wanna be sure I'm kinda covering how to do it with the book or with lecture notes. All right, um, so I think I managed to cover everything, even though I had to do a little repeat of this video. Just remember, read actively, take notes as you read. Don't just read the material, but read and then stop and do I understand this? No, okay, what do I need to do? Do I need to draw a picture? Do I need to look at another resource? Do I need to ask someone? And you can always just flag it for later, put a little like, maybe color code it, put a little dot next to it, ask the teacher about it in class. You know, that way you don't have to stop and look something up. You can just keep going, keep studying, and stay in your zone. Shoot for three hours a day. I, um, I would always take a day off, though. Like, I would always take Sunday off. So I wouldn't do three hours, like, every day. And some days would be more, some days would be a little less. So, all right, this video is super long already. Um, hopefully I was able to cover everything again for the second time with hopefully less staticky hair this time. Anyway, everyone, thank you so, so much. And if you have any questions, please leave them down below. I really appreciate hearing from y'all and I would love to help you in any way that I can. I really enjoy it. So thank you for watching this video and wish me luck and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.